two. Hello everyone, Master Zero One Zero One here. And continuing in our animated insert series, we're going to create another type of animated insert that I'm fond of. So jumping into box cutter, of course, my favorite way to create a cutting shape, we'll just start off creating a solidified circle by just drawing a circle and then pressing T. Then we'll create another circle and we'll just cut this in. And there we go, the most sci-fi shape there is. So from here, we'll use this circle that's at the bottom as a jump off point. And we'll press A to switch to make. And we'll just lift up our extrusion. And we'll press B and notice that our bevel is actually at the bottom, which we actually wanted at the top. So we'll press Shift F to flip that and then spacebar to just go through with this. And so this is basically what we're starting out with. One of my favorite functions of hard ops is the Q option for extraction, specifically the control click option that will basically take a selection and turn it into a separate object, which can be essential as you see here where I've split this selection into its own part and I've deleted the face, which allows me to, you know, begin modifying this on its own. So this is the workflow I do every time I'm dealing with drivers just to kind of create a little arrow series. So we'll select this point and I'll shift click mark to just control scroll select as if I'm on a laptop and then spacebar control I will delete that. And so with this piece, we just want to go under operations and choose spin. And spin looks like a disaster, but if we press F9, we can choose use duplicates and then we can lower the count. And there's always a duplicate placed on the first one when it comes to spin in 360, so just delete the original. And now we have these arrows. And this will be a lot easier than just spinning a circle and not knowing what's happening. So from here, we can press N. And in the end panel, we want to spin this on the Z. So we're gonna type a different driver and I'm gonna to try to make it as big as possible just for those who have visibility issues. And we'll type in pound frame times, or actually, sorry, went on autopilot there. Uh, cos frame times 0 0.15. Um, 0 0.15, I had a stroke there for a moment. So this is our driver of the day. We'll press enter. And if we press N, we'll see that this thing will just drift between 60 and negative 60. And if you know how far it's gonna drift in the driver, that gives you a degree of control that you can play to your advantage. So in this tutorial today, I'd like to introduce you guys to the uh, transformation constraint. I love constraints, but transformation is definitely one of my favorites. So when we activate this, we first want to choose our target, which is the circle. And as long as it's moving, we're playing speed here. So I'm just going to press escape so we can select this. And for sanity's sake, we're just gonna switch everything to local space. And what we wanna do is actually map the Z rotation, which in this case is going to be, let's say negative 50, negative 50 to positive 50 on the Z and we actually want to map that to the Z movement of the Z. So you can actually see that it's already interacting the way it's intended. And so first we want to determine what the min is going to be in the max, but you know, we need to find out what our rotation is. So right now we're at the 54 side. So that means we're kind of on the positive end of this driver. And now we're on the negative end. It's kind of hard to explain, but it is just one of those things that I feel like you get better at it as you play with it. But also there, the documentation is quite useful for understanding how each of the constraints work, but I definitely recommend everyone get in there and um, give each of them a little play. So now that we have this at 0.42 and negative 0.45, we basically have a constraint that causes this to move in and out as this object goes on this driver track. So. It's a real simplistic type of machine, but I like to create these sort of animated inserts and then, you know, add complexity to them, you know, as it goes on. So maybe we actually want to choose how far we want this to come out. 
And then by adjusting these numbers, we can kind of play with the hang time. So right now there's like a buffer of, you know, like 10 degrees where it just sits still, which gives it an interesting look I found from testing. But if we change it to negative 40 and 40, we see that we get even more. We could even go to negative 30 and 30, and it just has way more hang time, just really letting it, um, I was gonna say pound, but this is one of my favorite places to uh, kind of pound drivers. I was actually joking about that earlier, was um, you know I'm always trying to take these drivers and find an interesting place to use them. And one of them has been with inserts. So uh, I definitely wanted inserts to be able to support this type of workflow. So from here, we can actually press escape and let's begin talking about making this an insert. I'm gonna hide the cube and we're just gonna unhide each of these cutters. And maybe what we wanna do here is select this face and set our origin to selection there. But just to ensure that there's no cutting issues down the line, we wanna possibly move it up just slightly. And we probably wanna do the same with this face. Just move it up slightly just to make sure that whatever we planted in, it cuts just right. In fact, we could even move it up higher than usual in case we're going to stick this on a sphere or something because it is a pretty simple insert and then comes the parenting so for this we want to you know just grab everything we're actually going to parent it to the uh, main shell in this case so we'll just parent uh let's keep transform and we see that everything is fine if we let it play it just does its thing so we'll take this moment to power save and we'll call this insert test and power save and we see that we're on insert test number 22 and we move this around and everything's good so if we press in we could actually go to the chaos panel and i'm just using control middle mouse button to get things back to a reasonable size i mean not that old yet where i need it to be humongous and we'll go to new demo and we'll just call this um any circular uh, we don't want it with the circulars, but I did kind of make a lot of circulars. I apologize. We'll also turn off auto scale for later and we'll choose create insert. And here we are looking at our insert. Of course, it's placed in the air because we need to press alt G and get this placed into the ground exactly where we want it. And we also want to do camera to insert to get the camera to face our insert, but the camera faces the insert a little strangely for my taste. So, that's something a little bit more optimal. And we'll take this moment to just ensure that uh, visually we can tell that everything's a difference, but it's always good to make sure that your mesh is marked as the main OBJ and that the location is reset so that it inserts correctly. So we'll save our insert and we're just gonna call this an uh, circular one. We don't wanna lose our focus here. And we'll save this and at this point, we can just render our thumbnail. You know, I'm not even going to look at what it is. However, we should give it a blank material, hit it with a bevel, and then we render our thumbnail. Now we're talking. So at this point, we can close our factory scene, and we're back to our original file, which I'm just going to control in and make a brand new file. And we can just go to Kid Ops. I mean, my favorite place to locate an add-on is the end panel, let me tell you. So continuing on, now we look at our thumbnail, but if we bring our insert in, we see that it basically does exactly as intended. We may want to sharpen it just to get our shading right. And we also want to turn auto scale off. And we'll just take this moment to just place another one and place another one. And the thing about smart mode is if you hold shift, you can continue inserting repeatedly. I've been meaning to actually get it checked into about the scale being repeated because, you know, bugs haunt me. Can't let them live, especially if I have the power to remove them. So continuing on, we are now looking at using an animated insert, using a very simple driver. And now that we're not inserting, we have them coming in and out exactly as you would expect. So also, as you would think, if we were to want to try to offset some of these just to be weirdos, we would have to go in and mess with each of these drivers. And we could change things with the numbers. We could actually affect the driver itself. We could affect the transformation, but we can't do any of that 
if we don't turn off auto select insert. So we can just click on this and we'll just modify this driver to be 0.25. And we see that this one now comes out at double the speed of the first one. We'll select this one, set this one to 0 0.05. And we just have this really slow insert, you know, and we could just keep playing with these. When it comes to synchronization, that's a different story because obviously you possibly shouldn't have used a bunch of drivers to do such a thing. But I do contemplate how we could manage a bunch of driven things inside of some sort of management system. So it's not like it's something that I don't endeavor to someday take up the quest of trying to deal with someday. But I just want to show how easy it can be to just get in and just play with these inserts and give them different speeds depending on you know what your goals are with it. You know, I like this big one that you know really sends it to pound town. But also having something gentle that just glides in nicely is something that, you know, is a little bit more considerate and will possibly get you um, a second date. But with that, we can wrap up this video and I'll thank you for watching. See you guys next time.